Okay, so let's look at it, this example of balance or equilibrium. In this problem, we have a uniform board again. Uniform, let me remind you, just means that center of mass is at center of that board, okay, is at midpoint. Anyways, we have this board of mass 10.1 kilograms, which is uniform, and it is held by a spring as shown. So it is held in position by this spring, making an angle of 50 degrees with the horizontal. So this is a balancing situation. You can think of this as sort of uh, stable equilibrium, right? If you can exert enough force to break this spring, then you can cause it to disturb from equilibrium. You can cause it to rotate or something like that. Okay. Now, the spring is has a spring constant K of 176 Newton over meters. And we want to know how much does the spring stretch to keep this board in place, as shown. Okay. So, before that, since we are dealing with balance, again, we are either dealing with all the summation of all the forces being zero or the summation of torque being zero. In this situation, if you can look at it closely, if we let go of this spring, if you break this spring, the board will rotate either this way or that way, right? Either clockwise or counterclockwise. Or it will oscillate between these two things, these two directions. Since uh, we are balancing out this rotation, that means we have to talk about the fact that all the torques on this board is zero unless we have exerted enough force to make it rotate okay but at this position all of the torques is zero it's in balance then we have to draw a free body diagram because otherwise it is very hard to identify torques actually it is impossible to identify torques or any chosen axis let's go ahead and do that let's draw our free body diagram for this particular board the board is shown like this it is the ground here just as a reference point this is the ground and this angle we know to be 50 degrees okay all right so first force you draw is the weight and where do we know the weight is acting from it always acts from the center of gravity or the center of mass and for uniform boards or uniform planks or uniform objects it is right in the middle so the weight will act vertically downwards from the middle. So what is the weight? Mg. M is 10.1. So weight is 10.1 times gravity. What else? The spring, if you remember, will exert a force defined by Hooke's law. Hooke's law told us that the sum, uh, that the force caused by the exerted by the spring is equal to negative k delta x. And the negative is just the direction of this, uh, of direction of showing that the force is exerted in the opposite direction to the extension. Okay. The magnitude of this force is just k delta x. It's just k delta x. All right. So the spring will e extend this way for you to extend this board or rotate this board in this particular direction to disturb equilibrium so the force exerted will be opposite to that okay so it's because it's opposite to the extension so the spring force will be directed horizontally in this particular direction k delta x is the magnitude and the direction is given to us as shown by the arrow all right what else is are there any forces any other forces well there is because the board is in contact with the wall here at the corner whenever two things like that are in contact then they exert normal contact force like we have seen so far the contact force will always be perpendicular to the touching objects right so the contact force is along this way and we don't know, we have never seen a contact force like this because, quite frankly, we have never examined a board that is slanted and touching the wall at an angular position. All right? So these are the forces on it. Now we want to deal with our balance. We want to write down an equation 
like this for the torque sum to zero but for that to be true we need to choose an axis so to define this equation we it is it is a uh, mandatory to choose a uh, axis of rotation about which you may or may not have torque and for balance you will not have any torque but you have to define an axis since we don't know anything about this normal force from the wall on the on the board let's choose this point let's call that x let's choose this point to be our axis of rotation okay so why is it beneficial to choose this as our axis of rotation well once you choose this to be your axis of rotation you automatically know that the force n will not have any torque or any tendency to cause any torque about x because there is no distance away from this axis of rotation for this force again remember that torque is defined as the magnitude of the force times the distance away from the center of uh, the x fixed axis of rotation from the force times the sine of the angle between f and r the force and the line connecting the force and the axis of rotation since r is zero for n then there is no torque so it's easier to cancel out this unknown force by selecting the axis of rotation here all right that's a trick now let's get back to building our power equation okay so the equation is summation of torque is equal to zero about our chosen axis x now what are the torque what are the forces that are causing a torque or may cause a torque about x this weight and this spring force so basically any force that you see that are that has any distance away from your fixed axis of rotation will cause a torque all right and you have to sum those torque and show that they are actually zero because to attain a balance that must be true all right anyways so let's uh, let's write down let's call this torque uh, let's uh, let's write down this torque so summation of torque and also as always let's choose positive to be counterclockwise torque about x the weight will cause a clockwise rotation so it will be a negative torque negative the magnitude of the force is 10.1 times g which is 9.8 times the distance from the point from the axis of rotation the axis of rotation is here so the distance from that point through which the weight is acting which is the center of mass is this distance right here all right and we let's call this uh, l over 2 because if the full length of the plank is l then this is just through the midpoint so this is l over 2 l over 2 times sine of theta what is theta the angle between this r the line joining the axis of rotation to the application point of the force so basically this angle right so if this is 90 this is 50 this is 40 just by uh, uh, geometry so sine 40 right? and this force the spring force will cause a rotation about x in the counterclockwise direction so it will have a positive torque so positive magnitude of the force which is k delta x and our target is delta x times the distance away from the from the pivot point or the axis of rotation that distance is that distance is just l right this uh, from this point x to the point of application here is just the distance of the length of this board which is l so we have l here sine of the angle between this l and this force so this angle is actually 50 degrees right because it is the same as this angle alternate so this angle is the same as that angle which is just 50 degrees all right so sine of 50 and that they have both sum to give me zero all right so both of these terms have an unknown quantity in them 
it is L. And one of these terms have two unknown quantities. So we want to get rid of one unknown quantity. So what we do is we divide both sides by L. So the length of the board L just goes away. All right. And then our next job is to solve for delta X. So keeping delta x on one side and k is 176 given to us, 176 times delta x times sine 50 equal to 10.1 times 9.8 over 2 from here, sine 40. If you divide both sides by 176 times sine 50, then you can solve for delta x, right? Divide the same by here, and then we get delta x to be 0.236 meters. So what does this tell us? This tells us that if the extension of the spring is 0.23 through 236 meters, then this board is still in, in balance and the torque on it is zero so the board remains at equilibrium for this extension of this particular spring all right i hope this makes sense